Welcome to part two of how to catch bass anywhere, anytime, and in any condition. Now, if you haven't seen part one yet, click on this video up here and it'll take you and get you caught up and then you can come back and watch the second part. All right, here we go. Now, I know there's a hundred colors on the market and I think they're more for fishermen than they are for bass, but you just need to keep it simple. You only really need four colors. Watermelon, green pumpkin, black, and white. Green pumpkin and watermelon for high visibility and black and white for low visibility. And that's all you need. It may not be all you want, but that's all you need. But if you just can't stand using four basic colors, I'll give you a little tip here. Uh, just go to google.com and type in your state, say Arizona, and then crawfish, or Colorado, crawfish. And that'll pull up all the crawfish in your state, and then therefore you can get either lighter versions or darker versions of your local crawfish. All right, so let me just tell you a real, real, real short story real fast on why I like to use lightweights. Years ago, I was of the mindset I like to use the quarter rounds, 5 sixteenths, half, because I thought if I got my bait real fast down to the bottom, the more I could fish, the more fish I would catch. And I did catch a few fish here and there. I mean, two, three a day. Uh, but then one spring we had this big rain event and it washed a lot of muck into the, to the lake where I fish. And my little crawdad, it was getting buried in the muck as I'm dragging it along. It probably looked like that worm off of Tremors. <laughs> the bass is like watching it going, what the hell? What is that? <laughs> I'm not eating that. <laughs> I ended up going to like swim baits and spinner baits. Anyway, anything that would stay off the bottom. And you know, I caught fish. Again, not that very, not very many. And then one day me and Dakota, my dog, we were walking around the back of a cove. This cove was full of the same mud that had been washed into the bottom, right? Because that's the channel that all the water runs through is the cove. Anyway, I stepped in this freaking mud, right? And it was like boots still in mud. Like, it, I'm struggling to get my boot back. And I look back at my dog, Dakota, and, you know, see how she's doing. And she's like, boop, 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 walked right past me. And I was like, must be nice. And I'm trying to get my boot out. A few minutes later, it hit me. I'm, my weight is like way too heavy. I mean, if you think about it as bank fishermen, we're not fishing super deep water, maybe 15 feet max. I mean, we're on the shore, so we can't we can't cast that far out unless you happen to hit a hole. But anyway, we, we fish pretty shallow water and there's no need for such heavy weight. And besides that, I now believe that the heavy weight impedes the action of the bait. And so the less weight you can get away with, the better, okay? So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get rid of the weight. So I throw out a crawdad all weightless and I couldn't get it down. You know, these, these crawfish, you have to get down near the bottom or if not on the bottom, but you wanna get them as close to the bottom as possible. And that little weightless crawfish, I mean, you would like throw it out there and you're like, you know, have a sandwich, drink some coffee and it still hadn't hit the bottom. It took forever. So then, all right, I thought I'll try some lightweight. So I went with the Sorry, my lips are starting to freeze. <laughs> I went with the 1 8 ounce, threw it out there. It takes a little while to get down, but it gets down. And uh, I started to catch fish. And not only did I catch fish, I caught a lot of fish. I started catching like over a limit a day, if not more. I mean, a pile of fish. And so I just never went back to heavy weights. I probably will never go back to heavy weights as long as I'm bank fishing. So that's my story of the lightweights. Okay, so now the third and final rig, which is my absolute favorite. It's the ATV of all rigs, and it's called the bull rig. Now, I came up with this rig because I like to fish this thing that we have a lot on our shoreline. It's called button brush, and the bees love it, the birds love it, I love it, and the bass love it. But I kept getting snagged up with my shaky heads in my Texas rig, so I came up with this. But on this one, I pretty much use only the uh, magnum size on the uh, zoom speed cross and I like a 4 rod EWG hook. Alright so it's the same thing we're gonna Texas rig it so we're going in about a quarter inch and then we use a nail weight now these are VMC Nico weights it's too long as it is 
so you got to chop it down a little bit you see if you put it all the way in it's going to block the the hook set so what i do is i just take my knife and i just score it i'm going to score it right there like second from the end so you're just going to score it all the way around the uh the weight and if you have some clippers of course you can just clip it off and once you do that you can just break it all right so then you're going to take that nail weight and you're going to shove it in the keister and you do want to try to keep it in the center and i do it at this step before i put the crudit all the way on because i want to protect the knot i don't want this hitting the knot because it'll damage your knot and that's no bueno so you want to shove that nail weight in a good probably quarter inch because you don't want that that weight rubbing on your knot that's very important learn that the hard way and then just like the other you're going to texas rig it line it up where it's supposed to go through the bait all right so there you go you're going to have a weedless weighted bull rig that's what I call it. I don't know what it's really called, but that's what I call it. And here's a little trick I haven't told anybody yet. These are uh, ledge rock lures. I just started to uh, use these. I'm still testing them, so I'm not giving them my thumbs up yet. But what's great about these guys is the, the claws, the pinchers will float. So as you're dragging it down, it looks like the crawfish is taking a defensive position. You know, and that bass is like, look at it, and the crawls are like doing this, like he's you know, fighting back. Which makes it really realistic. On the uh, zoom speed crawls, they flap, but they don't float. So what I like to do is that right there. And as you're pulling it through, it pushes those claws up. And so it looks like, when you're pulling it, it looks like he's doing the same thing. So even though the claws don't float, you still get the same action. And it seems to drive the bass crazy. So my favorite rig right there. Now this rig you can throw into the thickest of cover, the thickest bushes you can find, the biggest chunk rock, gnarly laydowns, basically anywhere your heart's desire, you can throw this rig and get it back. 90% of the time. It does occasionally get snagged, but not very often. All right, so now you got the rigs down. How the heck do you fish it? Well, I use three different methods to fish it. The slow reel method, I use when I get into those really tight situations. All right, so because of the restrictive movement, all you're gonna do is toss it out there. Now you wanna maintain contact with your bait because more than likely, as that bait's going through the water, the little flippers are flopping. There's probably a bass that's watching it go down and he's gonna, he's gonna grab it. And by maintaining contact with the bait, you're gonna feel the thump when he grabs it or you're gonna see your line jump. All right, so if you manage to reach the bottom, the only thing you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your rod so that you're ready for a hook set. I'm holding it up high so you guys can see. And then you're just going to slowly crawl that bait across the bottom. And you want to feel all the rocks, you want to feel all the sticks, you want to feel all the logs, you want to feel everything. So you're going real slow, maintaining contact with the bottom. Just don't forget that you need to be able to set the hook. And be aware of your surroundings. Method number two is the slow drag. And this is the same thing, you're going to throw it out, maintaining contact with the bait. Wait for it to hit the bottom. And then I want you to watch my hands and I want you to watch the rod tip. So you're going to pull the bait along with your rod, not your reel. You're going to use your rod. You're going to pull the bait probably about 12 inches and then you're going to reel up the slack. Pull the bait about 12 inches and then reel up the slack. Again, maintaining contact with your bait the whole time. And then get ready for the hook set. exactly a bass but <laughs> that was cool well you don't always catch a bass with a crawfish 
But here's a few from yesterday morning. There's another one. Cut it loose. Cut it. We've been eating crawfish, as you can see by the red look. Crawfish are out there. <laughs> Here's Coda. Dakota. Come on. Oh, you're a big boy too. There you go. Now you tell me that that bass has not been eating crawdads. See the red lips? That's totally from eating crawls. The third option is the twitch. And uh, I pretty much reserve that for sight fishing. Although on the dragging method, sometimes on that pause, I'll do a little twitch. And sometimes that'll trigger a strike as well. But sight fishing is a whole nother video. It's addicting. It's better than any drug on this planet. But just for kicks, I'm going to throw in this clip. I want you guys to watch the rod tip. I want you to watch the twitch of the crawdad. And I want you to watch the reaction of the bass. Hang on, I'll get you right back. And it just fell out. This whole video was made just to give you a starting point and help you build some confidence. And before too long, you'll be wanting to explore new baits. Psst. Hey, you want to see what's under my coat? It's just baits. I got an umbrella rig. Well, I hope you learned at least one thing from this video, and if you did, it just made everything worthwhile. If you guys have any questions, just drop it in the comments below. And don't forget, I have the links to the terminal tackle in the description. Thanks for watching. Tight lines, everyone. I'll see you later.